All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do part five of the project, which is how to create the frequency histogram, relative frequency histogram, the frequency polygon, and the relative frequency polygon. Now there's a catch. The video that I'm making right now will be using Excel 2013. It's the only thing that's super different between the two versions of Excel. Otherwise, you can watch the old videos and they'll be fine. But if you have Excel 2013, which when you look at it looks like this, then you're going to want to watch this video. Now, if you have Excel 2010 or older, you're going to want to watch the old video. So um, when you're in my YouTube channel, if you have the new Excel, this is the one you want. If you have the old Excel, watch the Excel 2010 version. Otherwise than that, everything else is the same. So all the other videos are the same no matter which version you use. But graphs in particular are just a little bit different with the new version of Excel. So I'm going to make this new video. All right, let me go back here to the assignment real quick. All right, and it says we want to take the frequency distribution we already used or already created in part four, and we want to build a frequency histogram, relative frequency histogram, and so on. So we pull up Excel. All right, now what you can do is you can highlight your frequencies. To do that, I'm holding my mouse button down. So I click on the cell H3, I click and hold and drag it down, and then I lift up and I've highlighted those frequencies. Then we go up here to insert and click on insert, and a whole bunch of options come up for me. And what we want are these charts in the middle. In particular, you want this one, which is kind of a bar graph looking thing. So if you click on that little arrow next to it, you can click on this left one right here. And there you have it. Now, it's a little bit of an issue because I kind of want to see what's behind it in the table. So I'm just going to kind of move this over here and scooch it over a little bit just so I can see stuff. All right, now this is where things are different from old Excel. So it's easy to, well, first of all, you can click on the title right away and change the title. So this is part, um, what is it, part, five number one which is a frequency histogram i'm just going to label this what it is you can label it all sorts of things if you want you could say frequency histogram of the gdp distributions or whatever well this one's actually not gdp distributions this is final exam scores but you get to the, the general idea all right, now we have a few other problems. For one thing, we don't have titles on our other axes. So to bring those in, you go click on this little plus sign over here, which adds the chart elements. That's different for this version of Excel. And what I want is that second box right there. I want access titles. So if I click on that, then boom, I'll have access titles right there. All right, so let me go click on that. In these access titles, I'm gonna label them. So this one is the frequency. So I hit Control A to highlight the whole thing and then just type the word frequency. I'm going to click on this axis title, hit Control A, and then I'm going to type, um, this was final exam grades or um, final exam classes, things like that, final exam grades. All right, now I also don't like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven business. That's not good. Those are not final exam grades or whatever your data happens to be. So I'm gonna click on one of these numbers. It actually doesn't really matter where you click. What you want is to highlight all of these. Right click, oops, see there, right click, there we go, and select data. And then what I wanna do is I wanna change my horizontal axis labels. Right now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I don't want that. So let me see what I clicked on. I clicked on edit. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to highlight these classes right here and lift up. And there they are. Great. OK. And then say OK. Now, if they're too long, what you can do is you can actually rotate the um, labels. So let me see if I can find that. So if I right click, uh, let's see, how about format the axis? And then, let's see, maybe perhaps labels. Label position. No, that'll make it high and low. All right, let me click over here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so if I change my text direction from horizontal, say, to that way, so that way it's vertical. That way, if these are really long um, classes, then they can fit in nice and neat. 
So don't have to do that. It depends on your data set. The other option is to pick your midpoints. That wouldn't technically be wrong. So if you wanted to, instead of having the classes be your axis labels, you could have it be, oops, I forgot to right click. There we go. There we go. Select data. I could change it to the midpoints instead. So if I called it these midpoints, Make sure you don't get the fake classes in there. Remember, we have that fake class at the start and the end. We're going to work with those in a bit. So if you had the midpoints, then you wouldn't have to worry so much. And you could click over here on this little alignment button, which is that kind of looks like four arrows. And then you can make it be horizontal then, and it wouldn't be a problem. So up to you. I'm going to leave the, the rotated classes in there because why not? So there they are. And I don't want to see this menu anymore, so I'm going to close it with this little X. Okay, now the only other problem is that a histogram is supposed to have the bars touching. Bar charts, which are for qualitative slash nominal data, don't have bars touching, but histograms are supposed to have the bars touch. So if I right click and I want to format the data series, so I'm clicking on the bars, you can see how all the bars are highlighted. See that? Then what I want is to take this gap width right here, which is at 219% right now. I'm going to slide it down to zero, or you can just use the arrow here and go to zero. That's fine too. And then while I'm on the subject, I don't particularly like, so if you look, see that little bar chart thing is the series options, which is where we just changed the gap width. But I don't like how this is a generic blob of blue. So I'm going to go over here to the paint bucket. I'm going to click on border, the arrow for border. I'm going to add in a solid line border make it black and make it, well, I don't know, 1.5 wide. And there you can see it's changing it over here as you do it. And that looks better to me. So I'm gonna click off of this. You can shut that down again. It'll just pop right back up when you make another graph. And there you have it. We have one frequency histogram. Done. I'd probably label this, you know, part five. Um, what was it, graphs? I can't remember what it was called. Um, GDP graphs. All right, so I would label that. So part five, GDP graphs. That way it makes it easy for the instructor to follow what you're doing. All right, and then to make a relative frequency histogram, it's the same thing. Highlight just the relative frequencies. Don't bother with the fake classes. Click insert, click bar chart. You want number one. Let me move this over so you can see it. I'm going to label this. Um, part five, oops, part five, which is number two, part five, number two, which is a relative frequency histogram. Oh my goodness, if I can spell the word frequency, there we go. Frequency histogram. Enter. Oh, not enter. Just click off of it. Then I'm going to click the plus sign, add in the axis titles. There they are. And then I'm going to label them relative frequency and then click over here and these were you know final exam grades or whatever this was so you have to label it whatever your data set is then I want to right click on this bottom axis select data edit and I'm going to make it these classes right here okay okay and then I'm going to click on the bars right click and I want to format the data series and here we have some options. I want to change my gap width to zero, done. Click on the little paint bucket, add in a solid line. I'm going to make it black and boost it. And actually, I don't want the color that I've got going on here. So let me see here. I don't want shadow. Oh, there it is, the fill border. So I'm going to change color because I don't want it to be blue every time. So I'm going to change it to, I don't know, pink. There we go. All right, so that's almost done. Yeah, again, if the only other thing is if you want to rotate those titles, click down here on the title business. And then over here on the alignment, you can make it so that they are rotated if you so desire. All right, that's the relative frequency histogram. And I'm just clicking and moving the graphs around. And it's just hidden by this menu, but if I close the menu and kind of scroll bar over, you can see they're right there. All right, those are the two histograms done. Now I've got to make the polygons. But the thing about a polygon is that it's supposed to start at zero and end at zero. Let me grab the notes. There, this is in the chapter two notes. It's supposed to start and end with fake classes that have a frequency of zero. And they use the midpoints, see that, on the x-axis. So we won't be using the classes this time, we're gonna be using the midpoints. 
Well, the first thing I'm going to have to do is put in some fake classes. So I have a fake class of 0 at the beginning and 0 at the end. The midpoints, well, if you look here, the, t the class width is 10. So 10 away from 35 is 25 for the first fake class. And then 105 is right there. So this is your fake first class. And this is your fake last class. They're not, they're not really part of the data set. It's just because polygons are supposed to start and end at 0. Oops. Hold on, I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. All right, so I'm going to highlight all those frequencies, including the fake zeros. Click Insert. And we don't want a bar chart this time. We want a line chart. So let me click on the line chart. And I like the one with the dots in it personally, but you could also do the one without the dots. It's up to you. And there we have the basics. You're going to have to add in titles, just like before. And then you can click on all these titles. So this is part five. Number three, this will be a frequency polygon. And then I'll click over here and control all. This will be frequency. Then click down here. These are exam grade, exam grade midpoints, actually. All right, and just like before, we're going to have to kind of scooch this out of the way so we can see what we're doing here. Then I want to right click, select data. And I want to choose all these midpoints, including the fake ones. I want it to start and end at 25, or start at 25, end at 105. Oop, I didn't do that right. Hold on. I must have selected the wrong thing. Select data. There it is. Edit. There we go. 25 through 105. Yeah, see how it changed underneath it? And then say OK. And then you're done. There's really nothing more you have to do. This one doesn't have the whole gap width issue and all of that stuff. So I'm just going to kind of click and drag it down. And there we have it. One frequency polygon done. And now you see why we had to insert those fake classes in the last video, because we needed them for this polygon. All right, so ooh, I guess this was final exam midpoints, I should say. Final exam grade midpoints or something like that. All right, now I'm just going to do it again. So I'm going to highlight this time the relative frequencies, which also should start and end at zero. If you didn't have zero from before in there, you should have them in there now. Click on insert, click on the line arrows. I'm going to pick that second one down there. And then I'm going to click on this title, part five, um, oops, part five, number four, which is a relative frequency polygon. Um, before I click off of this, I, I'm going to change my color. I don't like how I'm going to click on over here on the line. That way it's editing the line part as opposed to the title part. And I'm going to change my color to, I don't know, green, something different. And I'm going to change, let's see what else. If I click on the points, oops, click off of it. It was selecting single points at a time. All right, now it should be in here. That, oh, the marker. So I'm on the line editing right now. If I want to change the dots, I click on marker, and I can change to right here color. I can make it the same green as I made the dots, or you can make them different colors if you want. And also on the marker, you can see that they have little lines and stuff. You can fiddle around in here and say, OK, I want the marker to be that color. The markers have little borders on them, little rings around them. You can make them whatever color you want. You can make them black if you want it. There you go. See it there? You can fiddle around with colors for days, I'm telling you. All right, now I need that plus sign. So I'm going to move this over because I need to see those midpoints. I'm going to click the plus sign. I'm going to add the axis titles right now. And I'm going to Control-All, type Relative Frequency. I'm going to go down here, Axis Title, Control-All, and type Final Exam Grade Midpoints. Click off of that. The only other thing I need to do, right click on that bottom axis, and I want to select the data, I want to edit my horizontal axis labels, and click and drag down. Make sure you get that fake first number and the fake last number in there, and say OK, and say OK. Then I'll just move this down, because of course I want to make it easy for the instructor to see all four graphs at the same time. And there they are. I'm going to click off this and turn off that menu system. And we have all of our classes, or excuse me, all of our classes in that polygon. And we have all of our gray graphs. Oops, I forgot the word for the Y in polygon. Oh my goodness, I can't spell polygon. There we go.